Hello and welcome to the video. I'm sat all the way back here because as you can probably tell from the thumbnail and the title of the video already, this is the first look at this thing here. This is the ZOHD Altus, their new twin plane that has just been released. Now I've been lucky enough to get my hands on it just ahead of everybody else. So I thought it would be good to do an unboxing, show you how it goes together and answer some of the common questions that I've had over the last couple of weeks since it appeared listed on places like Banggood. Now, I like ZOHD as a manufacturer. They've made an awful lot of planes. In fact, some of my favorite planes historically have been ZOHD. However, they've been very quiet over the past two and a half, three years since before COVID. So we haven't seen a lot from them. We saw an updated version of the Breeze last year, and then we saw the baby AR Wing Pro. But I'm aware that there's a lot of other things coming. And this is the first one that I've actually managed to get my paws on so I can show you what it looks like. So while I unbox it, let's go through some of the highlights and the specs. Now, this is a twin motor setup, two 204 1870 kV motors, 30 amp ESCs in each wing. So that hopefully will give us decent performance and efficiency. Speeds up to 120 kilometers per hour is what they're reckoning. We'll see when we fly it. It goes together very easily. It's designed around HD camera compatibility. I'll show you that in a minute. It's actually got quite a few good options. Lots of aerodynamic touches and air cooling for all the important bits and it's designed to fly for a decent amount of time with something like an 18650 4s 2p 7000 milliamp hour battery or something like a 4s 2200 3700 now the props are these here there's one set in the box there aren't any spares sadly uh, but they're hq props so it should be relatively easy to get hold of and then we have a bag of bits which has the thumb screws for the wings some extra screws for the nose and also to retain the tail feathers then we have the different hatches. Uh, so let me get into here, because this is actually the bit that shows you some of the interesting designs for how they thought about mounting HD cameras in the nose and giving us that option. So this is a balsa wood piece. And you can see here that they've got various different cutouts designed for it. So something like, a, you know, a square cameras, then we have things like a run cam thumb pro and you just push this out and put it into the front and then we have all the foam pieces that would go behind it to support those different camera styles so if you wanted to move things about you could and i love this idea because it does mean that i'm sure with a bit of effort i could 3d print and design my own noses and i'm sure lots of us will be doing that wingspan on this is 980 millimeters length is 770 millimeters this is the tail. So this is uh, quite a cute little bit designed as well. So not a carbon fiber spar. I'm sure they'll bring out an upgraded one. Connections for each servo coming in. So there's no connectors. It just is servo style stuff that's going to plug into your flight controller or receiver. Interesting connections here. So if I grab one of the tails and plug it in, you'll see it slots in and then the control surface at the back, which has a nice carbon rod to reinforce it, just goes into that piece. Now it's a shame there isn't some kind of clip or whatever, because what you have to do is use one of the screws to hold it into place. So sadly that means that disassembly isn't completely toolless. There's this captured part on the shaft along with a little rotating collet that holds it into the body. Speaking of the body, let's have a look at that. Lots of similarity with earlier ZOHD designs. If I pull the nose off, you can see those two screws that can come off that you can then replace with those balsa wood pieces. The nose itself actually has room for a camera if you just want to put a camera in there. Then we have the battery compartment at the front, which is actually much, much bigger than you would expect in here. Um, a lot bigger than I was thinking from the pictures. This is easily going to take a rather large battery. Interesting way of connecting the two power wires together there into one lead. I'm going to have to clip that off for the flight control I'm going to use. GPS cover like they always needed to. I would glue that in once you've got your GPS in there. And then in the back, there is absolutely bags of space. And I love the way that they have put notes on each of the connections so you know which are the motors which are the servos in the wings but interestingly they've also included connections for an auxiliary thing out in the wing as well i'll show you the wings in a moment but i love the way that they actually put that stuff on that's going to make wiring up a piece of cake so while we've got the tail here let me show you how that fits in so you have to feed the two servo cables from the servo connections up in the tail into place slide it home 
they will pop into the place where you can put them in the flight controller. And then this little rotating piece at the back locks in and is really good for making sure, hopefully you can see that on camera, really good for making sure the tail is absolutely aligned perfectly. And then you do the collet up. Connections on the side for all of the pieces and the power. The power pins are nice and chunky. On the bottom we have skids. We have a little textured place to hold it when you throw it. Although I would probably hold it from the nose and the tail with it being a twin. Under that, we have the carbon fiber rod. Let's just put that through the body actually and see how much that impinges in the space that we have. The tons of space in here for both a battery and a flight controller. Actually, that is really nice. We could get a full size Matek F405 wing, or I'm actually going to use a, the Speedy B Wing Mini. I'll come back to that in a minute in here. There's loads of room, some other decal things. Then the wings themselves, let's have a look at how they've actually done these. So again, we have all the connectors at the wing root. Um, so that's a nice touch. So they're all gonna be making all the connections and they seem to be nice solid pins. Uh, we have beautifully embossed in each side, which way the props are supposed to go on. Uh, those leading edge protectors, those black things are what they are. Servos are digital metal geared servos running control surfaces that have cutouts and also have strengthened pieces with the carbon fiber. I just love the amount of airflow that they've built into these nacelles to keep the included ESCs nice and cool. We'll put that leading edge protection on there. Again, this is exactly the same. And we can see the recesses there, those extra bays for those auxiliary connections, if you wanted them. It would have been nice if there was four pins out there that would allow people to run both things like Express LRS receivers on one wing and things like transmitters in the other. In terms of the build, well, that's gonna take you all of two minutes. It's really easy to put together. It's designed to be that way. I think once the tail is together, you're gonna to have to keep it together unless you modify the screws to be thumb screws or you keep a little screwdriver with you at the field. Uh, let's face it, if you drop the screws that you need to put in here, they're gonna disappear forever. So I'm probably gonna keep my tail connected and just remove it when I'm really tight for space. Uh, there's also the room at the bottom there for the skid. Then we need to attach the wings. The wings just go over the carbon spar, slide up into position. Nice, positive connection. Once both those are on, then it's just a case of finding the thumb screws and putting them in place. And let me just see, again, how easy it is to get to those thumb screws because we're gonna have a flight controller in this back bay. Is that going to mean that I'm gonna to struggle to get to these? Let's just try them and see what they're like. Actually, that's really good. There's not a massive amount of thread going into each wing, I'll be honest. There's probably only three or four threads, if that. So it's not gonna be something that I'm gonna do hard acrobatics, because potentially the wing will detach, but that's how it goes together. Now, I've had a couple of questions from Patreons in advance of making this video, so shout out to Polly and Henning, who are asking to side-by-side -side it with things like the Swordfish and the He-Wing T1. So absolutely, guys, here's what it looks like. It's significantly bigger than the He-Wing T1, but very, very similar in wingspan and size to things like the Atomar Sea Swordfish. So I'm expecting the flight characteristics, particularly with the wing size here, to be nice and floaty and very, very efficient. Very similar to the Swordfish. Interestingly, we have a V-tail again, and that means that I am gonna have to test whether the rudder authority is good enough, although it's not as flat a V-tail as Atom RC went with the Swordfish. It's just over 90 degrees, so hopefully that will help with that rudder authority. So from my initial look here and my playing with this thing, there are lots of things that I like. So we'll start from the nose. I do like the fact that the nose is held on with magnets and then I have the option to remove this front piece. And then we have other pieces in the pack for different camera sizes and mounts. And it does mean that it's relatively easy with that flat insert to design and print your own 3D pieces, which I might do here. The only thing that's a little bit disappointing about that is that there isn't an obvious place to do things like, as well as you have your HD camera for recording, have your walk snail, your DJI, or your other bits and pieces too. And also in terms of airflow, there is a massive amount in the nose. It would have been nicer to see a little bit more because I'm sure lots of pilots who get this will be looking at it and thinking about a DJI or a walk snail system. There is absolutely shed loads of room in here for both batteries 
and a flight controller and it's very easy to remove both those canopies so i'm quite confident that this is going to be one of those things that can fly for a long amount of time it looks like it's designed to be a very efficient cruiser and with a great big sunken battery here in the nose then it's going to be able to stay up for quite a long time so i'm not too worried about that although i'll probably fit some velcro in here and i'll probably run it on lithium polymer initially and we'll see how we get on with flight time give an idea of how much current it's pulling obviously room for a gps unfortunately lots of magnets here so if you wanted to do a gps with a compass for inav it isn't going to be ideal however if you're flying in low winds then you don't need a compass for inav so that's the way i'm going to do it with mine tons of room here in the back for your flight controller i could easily fit in something like a matek f405 wing in here but i'm going to build it out with a speedy b um, wing mini that's going to give me absolutely shed loads of room the receiver and everything is going to fit here in the back nice and easily and again big chunky magnets to hold the hatch in place love the removable wings like the fact that once we have done the thumb screw they're just going to come off the wings are probably the longest piece. I'll put the dimension of the wings from tip to where it finishes here at the roots here at the bottom of the screen. Um, that is probably going to be the largest piece that will not break down. You can take the tail apart if you wanted to. So would this fit in a backpack? Well, not really, unless it was a very big backpack, but some of it could, but these wings would have to be probably be wrapped in something and put across the back. And a shout out to Patreon Steve who asked me that question. Steve, hopefully that answers it for you. The tail design is nice. It's quite an upright V, which I quite like. It's a just over the 90 degrees. Um, the control surfaces are not particularly massive. We'll see how that all performs. And then obviously we have the skids and things that I'll put on the bottom and the leading edge protection as well. I do like these little pieces out in the wing. I just wish they'd have allowed for four wires rather than three because that means then CRSF and also control of things like VTXs and stuff would have been possible as well. And obviously no flaps in this and no option to add them either. However, we'll see how it flies. I don't think we're going to have to worry about managing low speeds with this one if you keep it relatively lightweight. Only a few things to be aware of here. The ESCs in each side are not D-Shock capable in this version anyway. Who knows, they might change that in the future. It would be nice if they were. That does mean that we're going to have to calibrate them. That's really important to have your ESCs calibrated perfectly when you have two of them. Otherwise, you're going to be fighting with your all the time. So be aware of that. I'm probably going to set INAV out without differential thrust. I'm not a fan of it. This thing has a rudder and that will probably be fine for that. No navigation lights, things like the Atom RC Swordfish have them. This haven't, I'm not too worried about that. The only thing I have noticed is the ends of the wings, these little kind of raised winglets, the tips are incredibly thin and they do seem to bend in. So I'm just going to probably uh, glue something or put some laminate to just keep them a little bit stiffer. But apart from that, everything looks really nice. ZOHD, welcome back. It's good to actually have a new model from you guys. Hopefully the airflow we can figure out when we build it for the HDFPV system and that can go here at the front. I may end up 3D designing a piece if I do I'll show it on Thingiverse and it's going to be easy to put in a speedy B winged mini in the back. I'll make a quick video of how I've done that but once I've done that we'll chuck it and see how it flies but this looks like it's very much designed for people like me who just like to go out and just get in the air and have half an hour flights just taking in the scenery and riding the air currents this feels like that is the kind of model this is however stay tuned the only way we're going to find out is to build it out take it to the field and give it a fly thank you for watching my video check out the playlist and adding painless 360 to your search terms will help you find my content if you haven't done so already, please hit the like and subscribe button. It helps a lot. You can support the time I spend here answering questions and helping others by using the links in the video description.